Hi, hello and welcome to another episode. Um, this episode is going to be a pre-MOT check on my neighbour's Renault Clio. Um, so sorry Mini fans, it's nothing on the Mini today. The Mini will be done, uh, another episode will be on, um, not next weekend, maybe the weekend after, my little one's first birthday, so that weekend is gone completely. Um, so stay tuned and I will get a video for you on the Mini. But this is all about pre-MOT on a, on a car. So if you've got basic tools like a jack, um, some actual sands, uh, something to get your wheels off with, socket, even a brake, you know, your brace pad that comes with your car if you're really after, um, a couple of pry bars, even a big screwdriver, and a torque wrench, then this is something that you can do before your car goes from a T. You can sort of suss out what may fail, uh, what's going to fail, and you know, simple things that you can change yourself. So I've already walked around the car and had a look around at the windscreen wipers, the washer jets. They're all working. Uh, the windscreen's clear. There is a slight little chip, but nothing major. Um, there is allowances, depending on where it is. Um, I've had a look at other lights, so I found that there's a couple of bulbs out, so we'll change them. Um, tires all look in good condition. There's no splits, no tears, no bulges in the sidewalls. It should be 1.6 millimeters um, minimum depth across the tires. So just check them. Make sure that there's no uneven wear patterns on your tires as well. Make sure they're all pumped up. So they're all the really, really simple things that you can do before your car goes for a test to make sure that it's not going to fail on something little like the wipers or the bulbs or the tires. Um, the next part of this video is going to be getting the car jacked up. So it's, it's already up at the minute, um, but we're going to take the wheels off and have a good look at the suspension components. Make sure the springs aren't rusted. Make sure there's no damage to the springs. Make sure the dampers aren't leaking. Make sure that there's no sort of um, corroded brake lines, no brake leaks, and break the brake discs and pads are all in good condition. The handbrake works efficiently, um, and then just have a suspension joints like bushes, track rod ends, um, suspension arms, and what have you. So it's really, really simple stuff, and all you really need to do is get your pry bar in and have a bit of a wiggle around with it. If you've got a lot of play in that bush, chances are it's going to fail. If it's nice and tight, it's going to pass. One thing I will say is, MOT testers, it, you know what they see on the day is what they will test. You can look through a car and have a sound peace of mind that it's going to pass and they might fail on something that they find. It's n this isn't a, a definitive list on what it will fail on and what it won't because there's so many different things. You can have things like battery um, straps aren't secured. You can have things like um, rust that you never even need to look for. You can have exhaust leaks, um, fuel leaks, fuel tank, and um, that can be corroded. So there's a lot of things it can fail on. Even seat belts, it can fail on seat belts. Um, any ABS lights that are showing, any airbag warning lights that are showing, it can fail on them. So what you see today, you know, I'll, I'll have a look at this car, give it a good go over and I'll look at the things that I think it could fail on. On the day it comes to test, that tester may find something else or may think just differently to what I thought and say, that's a fail. And that you've just got to deal with it, that you know, everyone's different how they test things. They all work to the same standard of FOSA, but each tester may have a little bit in his mind thinking, well, I won't pass that one, or I will pass that one. So you, what I'm saying is you never really know what they think and what they see on the day is what they're going to test it on. But what I see and what I think today is what I sort of say is going to fail. So we'll get this wheel off now and we'll have a good poke around it. So if anyone didn't see before, I'll show you how I take a wheel off without my torque, uh, without my impact gun. So as I said before, your wheel should move now. I've left it in gear, so we'll just turn it around. So again, making sure your cars, if you don't see this on the floor, you can do. Got more tight. That's nice and loose. Word of warning to you guys, if you are going to start taking wheels off and putting them back on, your locking wheel nut, which is a little funny shape like that has a special key for it. You never ever use a windy gun, impact gun, anything like that on that. Make sure that you're doing that up to the torque specs, which is specified by your manufacturer for that make and model. Because otherwise, you will break it, and you don't want to be that person that breaks it and you can't get it off, and yeah, you just mess with it. So, first inspections. I'll have a look at any obvious signs of leakage, any signs of corrosion. I'll just bring you in a bit, see if you can see in here. So brake disc, 
It's a little bit of a lip on it, but no major scoring. And the brake pads, there's a little bit of life left in them as well. So I think we'll leave them. The actual spring up here looks in good condition. There's no sort of corrosion on it, no broken springs or anything like that. Um, we've got an ABS line here. And we've got obviously a brake hose here. Sorry about the helicopter. So we're just making sure there's no leaks. There's no sort of damage, nothing loose with the braking system. So no leaks coming from the actual caliper. And normally you'd see, if, you, if there's a leak from your caliper piston itself, you'd see a bit of seepage um, along the back, which I'm not seeing, which is good. Um, then we come to our, I don't know if you can see this, but we'll try and get you in. So that's your damper. So it's showing a little bit of uh, corrosion on it, but there's no signs of anything leaking out of it, so that's all okay. It's just a bit of surface rust. All the bolts are nice anyway, that they won't fail on the bolts. You've got your brake, your solid brake line just here. Check that union, because normally on a brake line, whether union meets uh, whatever it's joining into, that's where it'll corrode first. Brake lines are normally coated in, um, I don't know what it is actually, it's like a plastic coating, but where it meets that union, obviously, they couldn't coat it there, so that's where they start to rust first. This one looks okay, and again, the flexible line down there looks great. So then you're looking at things like boots on your, um, any bushing or you know, track ends are known for it. So you're looking for no tears or splits where grease and dirt can get into it. Uh, grease can come out and dirt can get into it because that'll wear and that'll fail in the Anti-roll bar links, again, looking for any splits on there. All looking good. Then you've got your CV joint uh, where your boots are, making sure there's no uh, rips or tears in them. You would see that straight away if you sh what happens is grease flies out and it flings around, you'll get a big coating of grease all around here, so you'll know for a fact if you've got a, a, a leak in there or a split in there, you'd see that straight away. Steering gator, again, nice and dry. It's got power steering on this car, so you'll probably see some fluid leaks unless it's electric steering. You wouldn't see that, but you just have to do a visual check and make sure it's not split or anything. So that's all the sort of visual stuff sort of done. Now what we do is we'll get our bar in. There's a couple of links, so there's a bush just down here, which will give a little bit of a wiggle, if I can get me uh, my bar in. And that's fine. And then you've got another one back here. I don't know if you can see in here. That one's fine. And what I'll do is I'll bring you down a bit more down here. So I'm looking at this joint here, so again, we'll get our pry bar just underneath there and make sure there's no excessive play in that, which seems fine, and that seems fine. And we've got the anti-roll bar, so we'll have a bit of a pull on that, make sure there's no excessive play. And if you can see it, that's all fine. Fine. And then up inside here, I don't know if you can see it, it's a bit dark, but you have got an anti-roll bar bush, so we'll just have a pry on that and that's fine. So, so far the bushes on all this lot seem fine. If you didn't see it, I'll show you again this one down here. I don't know if you can see in down there. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, so there's no play on that one. I'm checking this one just here. Bar in. Uh, can you see that? Just checking that one there, the side to side motion, and there's nothing there. So, everything so far seems pretty decent. Nothing that looks untoward. Um, what we'll do is we'll get the wheel back on this side, happy with all that lot, and we'll just make sure there's no um, up and down play and side to side play. Side to side play, you've probably got a track or end or steering joint that's loose up and down, it's probably something like a wheel bearing. So I'll get this wheel back on, but that really, for that side, is done and I'm pretty happy with that one. So you can see, you do that times four, that's taking about five minutes. So about 20 minutes, just checking your, your joints and things, it can save you a bit of uh, hassle when you go to the garage. Something that uh, a, a chap that I work with he used to work in a couple of um, a couple of branches of a, a known garage I won't say by name but the uh, the start rounds with thick and the second one rounds with SHIT I think you can all guess what I mean 
And what he told me was back in the day, I don't know if they still do this, but they used to get bonus on um, upselling, so sort of things like dampers, exhausts, brakes, all the easy, fast fit things to, to sort of change. They used to get bonus on selling them. So when you do take your car to MOT, or when you used to, I won't say still like it, when you used to take your car to MOT place like this, he said to me, the oldest trick in the book was get a bit of uh, WD-40 and spray it onto your shock absorber. And then straight away you've got a leaking shock that you can show a customer and say, oh, you need a new shock absorber. So part of this is just you making sure as well that you know what you've got. So if someone does turn around and say, your shock's leaking, you can turn around and say, well, I checked it yesterday at one. I'm not saying we still do it, and I'm not saying that any garage would do something like that. But at least you've got peace of mind that you know what, you, what you're what seeing with your own eyes. So that's all, I'm not going to talk it up just yet because I'm going to it's back on the ground. But the wheel's on tight enough, and like I said, we've got the wheel top and bottom. There's no movement there. Side to side you will get a bit of play, but nothing really, it's too untoward. You have got a bit of slop in your steering rack, so you will feel a little bit, but if you were set in knocking, I've got a lot of play in that. That's when you need to start looking at your track ends. So that's all done on this side. What I'll do is I'll go to the back now and we'll show you what the back looks like. So is it an exhaustive list? Um, like I said, when you're looking at cars, you, obviously cars are all different. They've all got different ways of doing suspension, different brake setups, different um, spring and damper setups. They're, they're all different. But the main things you're looking at for is playing your bushes, uh, anything that's bent or damaged, anything that's excessively corroded. Looking for rust, normally along the sills, upper wheel arches. Newer cars, you don't see too much of that um, because they've, they've gone through a better process in the factories when they when they coated them. And plus, I've got a lot of plastic arches now, but all the cars you may see rough sides creep up here um, when you're outwards. And that's another thing as well is when you look at your bodywork, if you've got anything that's sticking out and it's sharp, that can fail as well. So, straight away, I don't know if uh, you can see this, I'll bring you in. That spring has become unseated from the actual. Uh, Arm there, and oh, yep, yeah. that shouldn't happen. So, this will need a new spring. Can you see that? So, we'll have to get that put in. So, uh, new rear spring so far. You normally change them as a set, uh, it's not really practical to change them sort of, you know, singly. You normally change them in pairs so that your ride height stays the same because obviously, springs will compress. Um, as time goes, shock as well looks good. No sort of leaks from that. And what we'll do as well before we sort of send the car back, we'll just give it a bit of a push down in the front and the back to make sure the damper's actually working. So the handbrake cable I know works, I know the handbrake works anyway, so I've tested that when I drove it in. Um, but the handbrake cable's all nice and clipped up, that's fine. And again, we'll check these brake lines, just bring you in. So we're checking brake lines for any uh, corrosion, which these are all fine. An ABS pickup as well, just down there. That's all nice and securely clipped. So then, what we'll do is we'll get our pry bar, which I've left over here, and we'll give the uh, the rear axle a bit of a wobble. Same sort of setup as what you see on most like Fords and what have you. It's just a an arm which goes a straight line across the bottom of the car, and we'll give that a bit of a wiggle there, and that's fine. There's no play in that. That's fine. Just checking the bottom bushing for the suspension joint, uh, for the damper, that's fine as well. So, all in all, pretty decent with it under here, apart from obviously that spring needs addressing, which is a simple fix to be fair. The back one's normally dead easy. Spare tyre, plenty of tread on it, and you just check your pressure on that one. So the back all looks okay. Then what we do is we'll get underneath the car a bit more and have a look at what could be, you know, faulty there, so you're looking at exhausts fuel lines, trace your brake lines where you can, and um, look at your fuel tank. So give us a minute and we'll get underneath and I'll get a torch out as well for you. Alright, so it's going to be a bit jiggly, 
but bear with me. So underneath here we've got, I don't know if you can see them, that says fuel lines there, running front to back, there's no fuel leaks coming from them. You can trace them all the way back down here, they're all fine, and they'll go back to the fuel tank. Then we've got obviously the exhaust, which just let me just sort that out. So the exhaust, I'm just checking for any, any obvious signs of it blowing, so you'll see any black soot. So, all looking alright down there, a little bit corroded, but nothing to worry about at all. Check your joints there, any joint would meet something, that's where we tend to go first, and your lambda sensor joints, but that's looking fine. Keep going all the way back, right to the end. We're looking okay from the midsection, and the cat disappears up there, so we're not going to see that one. Um, but what you can do is when, you, when you're when you running your engine to test your exhaust when it blows, if you make sure it's cold, just pop your hand over the back of, on the back box and you'll hear it go, it'll sort of build up pressure. If you hear a hissing, normally you've got a leak somewhere. So that's what you normally do. But you'll know if you've got a blown exhaust anyway, you should probably hear it. Um, but the exhaust looks fine from this point here. You've got brake lines just here. So there's a couple of unions just there. Again, check where your joints are because that's where we tend to go first. But these ones are all looking okay. There's no corrosion down these bits. They're all looking fine, all nicely clipped. So, so far so good. We're looking alright on this side. So I'm just going to move further back, have a look at the fuel tank, make sure there's no leaks. Um, fuel filter leaks can come from there as well, so that's what you have to be looking at. So you're making sure there's no leaks from that. Just bear with me while I get back in. So that will be our fuel pump, and it's a plastic tank on this one, so there shouldn't be any leaks, but you never do know. Um, it's all looking all right under here. And then there's a couple of brake lines that we'll just have a quick look at. We're back up here, put my torch. Obviously, it's a lot easier to do this if you've got a ramp or if you're jacking the full car up. So a couple of brake lines here, you can see there again where the, the unions are for them bits, it's all okay. A little bit of corrosion on the rubber bits, but nothing too untoward. You'd expect to see that sort of stuff. And a couple further back here as well. So just checking them. No leaks. Everything's okay. And you can see the rest of your exhaust from this side here. I don't get stuck under the car. Yeah, that's all looking all right. Nothing, no issues. And then you're checking these rubber mounts as well, making sure your rubber mounts are all secured. You will have different setups. This one on the back here. It's looking a bit worn, you can see that. That is looking a little bit worn, but it's still holding the exhaust, so it's, it's not an issue really. I'm just checking for a back to make sure that's all secured up as well. So, the torch. And you're just checking that exhaust mount there, making sure that's all okay, which it's, it's fine. That one's actually in better condition. That one's okay. So, so far so good, we're looking okay. The only things I've found so far then to recap is, uh, might need a new front tyre, it's a little bit low. Um, number plate light, fog light, just bulbs, and then that rear spring. So that's half of the car done. Then we just need to move on to the other side, jack that up, and then just check anything under there. I'm not going to film that because I've just shown you what we're looking for. But if I do find something that looks a bit skewy, I'll just show you it so you can see obviously what we're looking for. Um, but apart from that, it looks alright. Right, so the other side of the car seemed okay. There's nothing that I can find that looks like it could uh, it could fail anything. Um, so I'm going to do some sort of bonnet checks and what have you and go through the stuff that the MOT test will like. So like I mentioned, windscreen washer, fluid, that's in there. I've checked it already, just a quick squirt, it's all fine. Uh, you want to check brake fluid, power steering fluid if it's there. You want to check if you've got any oil leaks because you may get an advisory on that. Um, Aside from that, there's not much more that I can show you because, you know, there's, there's that many different things out there. I'm just going to taint the video. This is a simple thing that anyone can look at um, and check for themselves. We'll do a brake test on a rolling road to make sure that your brakes are efficient. I can't do that. I haven't got a brake tester. But driving the car, it's not pulling to one side. It's braking okay. The handbrake works fine. Um, they will do an emissions test as well. Um, I ain't got an emissions tester, so you will have to just go through. It should pass, we're not getting any warning lights on the dashboard showing that there's an emissions fault or anything like that, so it should pass. Um, aside from that, there's nothing much more I can show you. Um, these things like your petrol 
tank cap can leak. I had that on a car before. Um, there's, there's all sorts of stuff out there. The only re you know, the, I only really know based from experience of putting cars through a test and finding out what they come back for and the common things to look out for. So to recap on this car, um, it needs two bulbs, it need, may need a new tyre and it needs that spring sorting out. So that'd be four things that this car fail on. The common things for you to look out for in your car is going to be suspension joints, make sure the bushes haven't got excess play in them, make sure there's no splits in the bushes, um, any sort of um, rubber mount, uh, rubber dust cover, make sure it's not split, cracked, um, got oil coming out of it. Uh, so that goes for things like anti-roll bars, uh, your elbow drop, uh, anti -roll bar drop links, uh, track rod ends, um, it can be CV joint boots, uh, it can be steering rack gator. Um, so that's all your suspension stuff you need to look out for. Brakes, you're looking for you've got some decent thickness on your brake pads and your brake discs. It is set out on the actual uh, disc itself what that thickness should be. You can measure that with some like a special gauge, so have a look at that. The other way around it to measure it is if you get two known flat bits of metal or even something that's the same thickness of what it doesn't matter, just something to sort of pack it out because you will get a lip on the disc. Something to pack it out from that disc, even two coke bottle caps or something. Get a pair of calipers over it, you'll find the maximum you'll find the thickness, and then put your two sort of blocks together, measure that and subtract it from the number that you've got. That'll tell you brake disc thickness roughly. Um, and that'll tell you compare it to what it says on the disc if it's good or bad. Um, make sure your pads have got a bit of life left in them. This may get an advisory on the pads, but it's got a you know, it should have a thousand or two miles left in it, so it should be okay. So make sure there's no leaks. Uh, make sure your brakes are working okay. Make sure the, the thicknesses of the materials good as well. Uh, making sure your lights are all working. Uh, make sure that your seat belts are all in good condition. They all work and go into the clips okay. You need to make sure that your fluids are all okay at the right levels that they should be. Uh, make sure there's no oil leaks because I'll have like an advisor on that one. Um, again, check your windscreen, check your wipers, are they working and clearing properly. Um, any ABS faults. Um, ABS faults, airbag lights. I don't know if a red energy management light would fail it. I'm not too sure. I've never personally put one through with a red energy management light, but you never know. So something I want to mention, I mentioned on my last video when I did the uh, Ford Fiesta brakes. It's so crucial to get things tightened up properly um, to torque spec. So if you are doing this sort of job, please make sure you've got a torque wrench. Please torque it up properly. Um, you don't want wheels falling off. Uh, anything else while well, you're doing on a car, make sure you've talked it up to spec. That can be found in a Haynes manual for that make and model of car. It can be, you can even contact a manufacturer and they should, if for decent, tell you. Um, things vary from car to car and also depends on what wheel type you've got. So these are alloys, you could have steel wheels, they might be different. Um, and again, years of cars, they can be different. If you've got aftermarket wheels on or something like that, or aftermarket wheel nuts, they can all be different. So just check your torque specs. The way you torque wheels up is always in a opposite direction so you go to that one first and then to that one over to that one and then finally across to that one I have talked this ones up already so I've put the key away I just want to show you the directions if you've got a five um, five wheel nuts on there you'd go there down there up to there down to there and across to there so you do it in a star basically if you've got six it's easy because you just go one two three four five six if you've got three, you go one, two, three. Uh, some smart cars have three wheel nuts, and uh, my old Saxo, the Mark One Saxo, that had three wheel nuts as well. So just make sure you're doing it properly, guys. I can't stress it enough how, how important it is to get things tightened up properly to the right spec. Um, the fluids in the engine bay all look good. There's no issues with anything in there. So, um, apart from that, I don't think there's anything else that I can think of checking on this car. There may be something that it fails on, uh, it may not be. Um, we'll have to just wait and see, but when I did the mother-in-law's Fiesta, that passed. We're just checking this basic stuff, so we'll see what happens and we'll go and have a chat as well about that rear spring, because that really does need sorting out. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I know it's not been about a mini. Uh, most of my subscribers are minis. If you found it useful um, and you just stumbled across this video, please like, subscribe and share it. Um, please don't forget to ring that bell. Um, and yeah, just check your car. You never know what you might find. You might find something simple that goes in for a test. 
Um, when it goes in for a test, you get 10 days to take it back for a uh, partial retest so you can test it, bring your car back to your house or to a friend or something that can do the work cheaper for you if you wanted to do it. Just bear in mind that if you have run out, um, just bear in mind that when you get it tested, technically, if it fails, that car has failed. This is something that I read on uh, DVLAs. If, even if you've got MOT left on it and you're getting it tested early and it fails, your car has failed. So you would have to get it towed to your house to not be breaking the law. I mean, you're driving a car that's unsafe on the road. It kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, I've got 10 days to bring it, take it away, do the work and bring it back and then get it retested again. So, yeah. Hope you found that interesting. Hope it passes. From what we've uh, what we've gone through, like I said, I'll change in bulbs and we'll have a chat about that spring and see if you want me to do it or not. Um, and yeah, I'll let you know. I'll give you an update when I do my next mini video. So cheers, guys! All the best. See you later.